Behind the Counter is sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Sign up for a new account and get your domain name for only $249 by using promo code Queens at checkout. All right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome, everybody, to another episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is the new star of a Broadway revival of New Jack City, Jonathan Adler. <laughs> You'd pay money to see that. I would definitely. <laughs> I was trying to pull up a quote from uh, New Jack, but... Uh, you in New Jack City now, boy. <laughs> you better sit your $5 ass before I make change. There you go. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody, to... I uh, you do what? I wish I miss you. Wesley. I miss him too. Uh, to behind the counter, this is your one stop shop for everything pop culture, comic book related, video game related, uh, Breaking Bad related, Game of Thrones related, um, and sometimes pro wrestling related. Sometimes. It seeps in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, what's going on, man? Not a whole lot, man. Yeah. Looking good. Thank you, sir. So are you. Yeah. You're uh, looking slender and uh, a little uh, hairless. I am very hairless. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, if you want to donate to my cause, <laughs> I now have alopecia. Uh, <laughs> or an alpaca, either one. Mm-hmm. Um, got, this guy's got alpaca. I got alpaca. You want alpacas? I got you. Did the girlfriend finally win? In what sense? In the the beard sense? No. Uh, what I did was I was uh, fixing the beard up, uh-huh. and I did a little bit too short. Didn't like it, and then I kept on screwing with the shape, and I looked like a Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. I had like the the chin strap oh, going, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. I was like, oh, this guy, this has to go. With that sweet G line. I'd like to see in a G line. And then <laughs> it's not, it's not cool, man. I don't have the head for it. It's like, <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, and then I, I, I was like, screw this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shave it off, and I'm, I'm gonna keep a mustache. So I had like a really gross like caterpillar on my lip, uh-huh. and mid shaving it, I was like, oh, I should have done the Hogan. I should have done like the yeah. awesome Hogan, but. That that boat, or you could have done like a John Waters and made it thin, like a thin mustache. I was I was I, was, I was just so disgusted. I'll show you a picture of the caterpillar later, but uh-huh. uh, <laughs> I did it because I promised my girlfriend that I was going to do it once during the course of summer. I was going to shave completely clean. Yeah, because she hates the beard. She hates the beard, yeah. and then uh, she saw how weird my face is, you know, without mm-hmm. this, and she's like, "Why is it going to grow back?" And I'm like, "You see." Yeah. I made you fall in love with the beard. Cover it up. Yeah, yeah. I get. The same I know. Thing. I know my face. Like I, yeah. I know that. Like you're, you're accustomed to seeing with a beard. I oh, feel yeah. more comfortable with my beard. So mm. I can't wait for it to come back. Yeah. I hope my time in the mountains will be. Uh, It'll come back in two days. Faster. Man. Well, this is you know this is growth from like, yes Tuesday, yesterday Tuesday I think I did. So uh, I saw that picture of you by the pool shaving yesterday. So I'm assuming this is like one day hair growth. Yeah. So, oh no, two, yeah. two days. Two days. I, I left on Tuesday, so. I think I did Monday night. Okay. Do the Hogan. I want to see the Hogan. Eventually. I've done the Hogan before. It's amazing. I want to see I look the, great in it. I actually. want to see the Hogan and I want it, I want you to do shoe polish cheeks. I'll do the riffraff zigzags too. For, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll I want that. All the facial hair. All the facial hair. So uh, besides getting tan and surfing, what's going on, man? Um, what's going on? Oh, Breaking Bad premiered. Which was phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I was a, uh, we talked about it a little bit, you know, early in the weekend mm-hmm. in the show, but it was so good. Um, I like the fact that it was that nice little slow burn to like the Hank stuff. Yes. It was really rocking. It was very, I'm very excited for that. Did you watch the other show afterwards? The uh, Winter Sun yet? No, I watched uh, Total Divas after it, right after. Oh, I gotta catch I up on that. the channel. I'm, I'm, I'm so far behind on everything right now. Yeah. I am in like limbo. Uh, welcome to my world, bro. I always <laughs> fall behind everything. Um, Breaking Bad was awesome. I, I, I like how people who love Breaking Bad also for some reason have a lot of time on their hands on the internet. And yeah. the day, Monday morning, it was like 85 memes from the episode, and some dude animated the uh, Star Trek sequence that Beaver Badger was I talking know. about, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and whoever did that nailed it. But like such a quick turnaround time for like all this crap. Yeah. You know? Well, it's funny because like, you know, I, I subscribe to the, the Breaking Bad Reddit, mm-hmm. and it's all like immediately, it's like a downpour of like GIFs and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is crazy. I won't man. call it GIF. GIF? I call them uh, GIFs also. GIF. Uh, GIF Wars, bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want Cranston in a Marvel movie. I think it's gonna happen eventually. I want, I'm I'm anxious. I know he's gonna have a, a nice little movie career because that guy is like the consummate uh, supporting actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see him becoming like a, an old man for the most part. Yes. Uh, but to, I want to see what his like his long term kind of uh, kick is gonna be. His uh his end game. It'd be nice to see him in like the Shield TV show, which I hear is incredible. Yeah, 
I the first reviews came out uh, a couple of days ago and it sounds amazing. You know what would really make it for me? Because uh, mm-hmm. I I tend to and you're the same way. Like you tend to stay away from like the comicy related properties on absolutely. TV. Uh, they don't have the budget for it for the most part. Yeah, and it's just like eh, you know, like yeah. you're kind of saving yourself getting pissed off at well, something you know you're gonna they, get pissed off at. Yeah, and because they they do they have this like weirdo, which I I mean I'm hoping that Josh Whedon doesn't do it because he's the you know the yeah. man behind the curtain at mm-hmm. this point in Marvel. I, I really hope they don't do that like PG thirteen. Like teeny bopper mm-hmm. stuff, or um, I think they will. I think you're gonna get a dose of it. You know, to a certain you, degree, but as long as yeah. it's not overpowering. Like yeah. you know, there's a reason why we stay away from Smallville and stuff like that is because there there's inherent some inherent need for them to make it romantic. Yeah, like ve- yeah, very high schooly and very yeah. like you know flirty and everything like that. It's it's much more girly because I guess that's the yeah. audience are trying to go for. But it's it's the next phase of having a book like. Uh, Superman's gal Lois Lane, or Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane, yes. or like Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. They're very lighthearted. Yes. Like it never gets like you know like too if, heavy. If there was a Batman TV show, you'd never see his back get broken. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And like Tom Welling never put on a costume until like the last episode, episode. which is like you know you want to see. I'm watching the Superman show. I want to see that dude in a well, Superman they, costume. That show was on for 11 seasons, I think, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So like 11 years of uh, waiting for that guy to do a costume and just like floppy haired. And, and I'm sure there's great. Thing. I'm sure there's great parts of the show and anything, but I just don't yeah, agreed care enough to invest my time into that. Type Same thing with Arrow. Arrow I hear is like yeah better than mediocre. So yeah. Uh, which is a horrible thing to say, but you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's always been like a, for two guys who really are invested well, in comics, as long as we have been, it's a hard sell. You well, know? it's also like, you know, TV shows are much more consuming than mm-hmm. comic books and, and movies. Yeah. You know, movies are dedicating an hour and a half, two hours of your time. Television show is dedication, you know, weekly events. And then, you know, like if you miss it or if you want to catch up, you got a whole day ahead of you watching you right. know, 13 hours worth of television. <laughs> but you know, at this point, I think we want to watch the highest quality television that we can get our hands on. We're spoiled by it. Total, Total Diva is, uh, you know, is exception, mm-hmm. but, yeah. you know, you have shows like, you know, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, Game of Thrones, which mm-hmm. are at the top of their game. Right. And you kind of expect the same thing out of the fiction that I expect the highest form of fiction to come my way. Right, right. So, it's nonfiction, different story. It's a, yeah, but that's, that's, all, that's also a matter of taste, you know, like people like... You know, for Bubble example, Gum. like uh, people like Bubblegum and also I'm sure you're going to get a lot of people who are like, you know, I never really watched Game of Thrones, but that White Queen show looks amazing. I'm going to watch it. Which is too. the same. It's basically the Game of Thrones. Well, it's the War <laughs> of Roses, which is like the Game of Thrones is so loosely based on. Right. But yeah. it's. It, you know, yeah. I like, mean, it would never have happened if it wasn't for Game of Thrones. Production wise and yeah. also the way they're selling it to you. It's kind of like, and who would be king and I would be king. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's going to be king over there. The day before it even aired, I was reading New York Mags. They they're going to have a black dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have a black dwarf. <laughs> They, uh, they, there was like a immediately as soon as they started showing previews for it, uh, New York Mag was talking about like making lists of yeah. who are they, you know, this guy's Tywin Lannister and this guy is right. a sexual disappointment. Yeah. This guy's gay, but not in the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, white man's biggest fear is a black dwarf, man. Is it? That's from, uh, clear history oh that's right yeah <laughs> i've been repeating that to uh, my fiance the entire week <laughs> it was so oh man that movie was awesome it was great it was such a because pl- i totally forgot it was on saturday night yeah. and i uh, i dvr'd it though and uh it was such a pleasant sunday morning to watch mm-hmm. like larry david and john ham work it out yeah yeah <laughs> it was uh really interesting well, think, this is like, such a great cast you think he got any of the money who <laughs> larry david no <laughs> <laughs> it blew the house oh man like <laughs> michael keaton was awesome in it he does such a, he they, mm. david does such a good job of just like deflating any situation yeah when it comes to like his storylines uh, he really brings them really low oh yeah yeah and it was a lot of larry david moments in front of you that's a larry david fan out there leon if you if, i feel like if you read comics and stuff like you should like Kirby and i don't know why i associate all the stuff that we talk good about stuff. with comic books oh it's, it's good stuff it's yeah. just like it's all like it's a uh a smorgasbord of, of good stuff. Um, the uh, going back to my point before, I would love to see Cranston in a Marvel movie. Mm. Um, especially now that you, it's branching out so far. I really enjoyed the teaser that was released. Well, not really released, but the teaser that was bootlegged and put on YouTube of Gardens of the Galaxy. Oh, it could be. Re- it could be a work. Yeah, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. Uh, yeah, just seeing little glimpses of like yeah. Star Lord and like Rock Raccoon and Groot were awesome. Listen, he's got the helmet, which is a that's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, man, I'm him. really excited about yeah. that. As you see his new casual wear, he has like a, a weird like red and blue like trench coat thing. Perfect, awesome. Uh, and it's almost positive that Vin Diesel is playing Groot. Really? Yeah, that's fine. He only has to say one word. How could it be? Yeah, well, the uh, well, that's really, that's exactly what he did in uh, Big Guy in the uh, Iron Giant. Yeah, Big Guy in the Russian Robot. 
Groot. <laughs> Groot. Uh, what else is going on? Math hope, Fraction. Hope you're not afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't unchain me. <laughs> Whatever I tell you not to do, you do. Do I drive this car? Drive this car. Drive it all the way to Tokyo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, by the uh, way, uh, before I left, I have not finished it yet. Okay. I was watching uh, Pain and Gain. Awesome. What a friggin' movie. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the most enjoyable. Oh, number one, Rock is fantastic in this movie. He's mega jacked up in that it, movie, everyone, too, right? Everyone's really mega jacked up yeah. in this movie. Uh, Rebel Wilson's really good in it. Sweet. Ma- when Mark, you know what? I was thinking about Mark Wahlberg. Uh, sometimes guy gets really on my nerves. Oh yeah, and he yeah. just like kind of mails in performance. But when he's good, he's like like when you look at him in Departed, you look at him yeah, in like yeah. Ted and stuff like that, where he does like we really brings his comedy chops and mm. stuff. Dude is funny as all hell. Yeah, Tony Shalhoub is really good in this movie. Tony Shalhoub is in it. Yeah, nice. it's it's so awesome. I'm pretty pumped to see it. Check uh, it out. I watched The Conjuring over the weekend. I watched that also. How'd you like it? I, I liked it. Mm. I did not think it was anywhere as good as uh, Insidious or Sinister. I agree that it scared the crap out of your girlfriend. <sighs> yeah, but I think it deflated. Like I think the uh, I think leading up to everything was really mm. awesome. And I think the payoff was not really there. Like uh-huh. in the last like half hour of the movie, mm-hmm. I was I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think yeah. it's a bad movie at, at all. I think it was really awesome. Um, but there was something that I didn't quite you know sink me in, like. Maybe because I had a happy ending. I mean, because okay. like Insidious and Sinister, which is just like I, horrible ending. Yeah, it gets really messed up, especially yeah. like Sinister, um, which is a, a really tough movie. Well, this one I think leaves room for a sequel. Well, it's all a true story. Like, yeah. They have to keep in someone in the confines. Uh, but they said they might do this. The next one might be the Amityville Horror because the two right. dudes are going to investigate that. Well, that was like the weird nod at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh, problem. Some place in Long Island, Long Island. Babylon, yeah. the Amityville. <laughs> um, I really liked it. You know, I I, I was uh, I watch it with uh, with Vicky, and I was like, honestly, like if this ever happened to me, if that, like, if I woke up and I saw like like a out of here, like a like a like a like a corpse of a of a woman on top of a closet, out of here, heart attack, immediate yeah, yeah, heart attack, out of here, I'd be dead. I'd there be would dead. be there would be no question. Like the uh, like in uh, in Sinister, like the day you won. Mm-hmm. when you like you get woken up by like, <laughs> crazy, crazy shit, and you find yeah. your uh, your your daughter in a box in the front of the <laughs> front of the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm out of here. I'm yeah. done. Wrong done. choice. They'd win immediately. I would have like the the biggest coronary on record in America. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, because like it's hard, yeah. like there's they, they that you know because James Wan also had had something to do with uh, Sinister. He didn't direct it, but mm. they you know they're kind of making these really cool, like very simple, yeah, you know, horror movies that are like big on scares and big on atmosphere, mm-hmm. which, which was exactly what I want. Yeah. And you raised a really good point because I was going to see in the theater, and you said wait till you know it comes out, yeah. yeah. And he said you know because horror movies are meant to wa- be watched in like the confines of your own home, especially when it takes place in someone's home, right? Right. Because it get you really get sunk in. Yeah, it gets you it gets you really messed up, and also like I don't like um uh. I don't like hearing other people's reactions to movies for some reason. Yeah, I'm not judging them, but and you want to scare the crap out of your girlfriend. It's, yeah, absolutely. You know, and yeah. she got really like frank because we were watching with the lights out and everything, and you know, we had a couple of drinks, and it was like, I don't know if I want to go into the bedroom right now. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I what I like to do is I like to you know watch my girlfriend and then send her home right afterwards. <laughs> All right, walk home. So she's, <laughs> so she's on her own and you know terrified. It would have been great if you uh, live near the woods. So you have to walk through the woods together. I'll drive her home next time. I'll drop her off somewhere. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good. But anyway, back to comic books oh, and whatever. the Shield. Uh, you know what would make it the Shield for me? TV show. What's that? If uh, Mackie shows up in the first episode and says he's got the wrong office and he leaves, I got the wrong. Office. <laughs> <laughs> or Wolverine. I'm shaving a potato. <laughs> um, uh, Mackie as Wolverine showing up at the wrong show. Oh my I'm god. The wrong show. I'd love <laughs> it if they were like, and Michael Chiklis is Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> What do you need, man? It's funny. I was re- I read the solicits today, and mm-hmm. they had uh for Marvel, and they have like a Shield comic coming out for it. And it's funny because the first thing they mm-hmm. do is uh, Spider Man, and then the issue after that is X Men. So they're trying to do like this. St- you'll in the Shield comic, you'll have them interact with like the heroes that you won't see in the Avengers movies. Okay, all right, all right cool. Speaking of Marvel solicits, talk, uh, <laughs> talk. All of the Ultimate can- uh, comics are canceled. Yeah. Uh, as of November, uh, right. they are part of the Ultimate Cataclysm. Each issue that's supposed to be released that month mm-hmm. is a separate part of the Ultimate Cataclysm storyline, which okay. has Galactus wrecking shit in the Ultimate Universe. So that's the, uh, that's except, the end. except for Ultimate Spidey, everybody's and, and I dead. Think, and I think there's going to be a couple of others that do make yeah. it out. Uh, his name, uh, when Ultimate Spider-Man does come to Marvel, true, the mm-hmm. Universe 6, 616, uh, we are going to have him called Spider-Hero. 
Okay. Yep. Great. Mm-hmm. That's uh next piece of news. The <laughs> <not cool. laughs> Uh, I mean, like, uh, listen, I, I, I am very dedicated to the Ultimate books. I still yeah. read all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy that crap out of Ultimates right now, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. It's a crazy storyline with the Hulk, yeah. Reed Richards, and Kang fighting, like, you know, uh, the regular Ultimates. Uh, and then they've got, uh, they killed Anthony Stark and mm-hmm. all that stuff. His name is Antonio Stark in Ultimate Universe. Wow. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Uh, <laughs> they showed his gravestone. It's like Antonio Stark. Yeah. Um, uh, they revealed that Tumor's head was actually an Infinity Gem. It was cool stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm so far. Be- I'll, I'll catch and, up to it. And Ultimate X Men is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it's Brian Wood. Yeah. You know, and I, that guy's on a little bit of a renaissance right now. I absolutely, I agree with that. You know, between X Men, Ultimate X Men, Conan. Yeah. Uh, well, well, what they call it? I think it started when he did Vikings. Like yeah. Vikings, I think somehow shaped him well, and then he started doing a lot of work for Marvel. His X Men stuff mm-hmm. is fantastic. His regular X Men. Yeah. Uh, the female team. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah. yeah, I like. I love that book. I, I look forward to that book uh, every month when it comes out. Mm. All the X Men books are really, really excellent they at are. this point. You know, like Uncanny X Men is one of my favorite reads, uh, especially when Fraser Irving's on the book. That guy's awesome, and he man. nails. He's, it. So, he's come such a long way too. Yeah. He drew such a weird and amazing Cyclops. Yes, he does because he gives him uh, without the helmet. He gives him like the uh, the seventies kind of do. Yeah, like the 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 Dave Cockrum like weird yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he draws a really. A really feisty looking old Magneto. Yeah, he he he. Because I like I really like the way that my favorite depiction of Magneto for the last like few years mm-hmm. has been uh, Chris Bacalo. Uh cause Yes, because he, he really overdoes it on like the the helmet and like yeah. the you know the studs and everything. But uh, Fraser Irving, like his depiction of him is really gnarly. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the thing with Cyclops also is like when he does have the black stuff on, he has the unusual X visor. Mm-hmm. He looks so shapeless and like mm-hmm. weird and alien, which is like kind of the way they've been using Cyclops for the last few years since the game back is dome. Absolutely. And it's it's such an effective look when it's done right. Yeah. Because it, it he's such a weird character that it he's a character that uh his personality can really come across in his costume very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that completely. And now he's he's so much more fleshed out now, especially now oh, that Bendis is uh he's kind of taking him over. He's a mess. Yeah, he's a complete mess and he's the one guy who's just like all in a day's work, guys. Yeah, and, and like, like, you're like nuts, he, bro. And he's still a murderer and yep. like it there's a you know, he's he's definitely like a character you would never see like, you know, ten years ago you would never see Cyclops being in the situation that he is now. Exactly. Having killed Professor X Creating his own, you know, off action, being like a militant, you mm. know, uh, revolutionary on the run for the most part. Yeah, and like you know, you know, being a teacher inside the Weapon X facility, you know, it's right. It's cool stuff. Like they've done yeah. some really cool stuff with all the X Men. It's it's uh, especially especially with Cyclops. I think it's it's really it's an interesting character arc because it's he's conscious of what happened. Where it's like any other character, yeah, like it would be all right. You know, he was taken. Uh, controlled by magic and uh, you know he wasn't in control of his actions he wasn't in charge of himself like right. when Electra came back from the dead or yeah, Wolverine yeah. came back from the dead they excuse that in a heartbeat Yeah, and he's the one guy who's like what I can't blame this on magic it was uh, the Phoenix Force I didn't really want to kill yeah. Professor X and he's going to be he's like well I guess I'm on the run now well everyone everyone's <laughs> waiting for this guy to screw up it's like yeah. it's like Captain America the second that guy you know screws up somewhere like everyone's gonna you know jump on his ass why'd you do that Cap? <laughs> you been breaking our balls all these years yeah um, a little fast. It's, the, the whole X Men kind of niche corner uh, <laughs> is really, really awesome right now. Uh, some sad news: um, Matt Fraction leaving the FF books. Why? Both of them. Oh, it's a, see, it's a heartfelt why because mm-hmm. the books are really awesome. Yeah. Um, because you know he's throwing this uh, Inhumans thing right. uh, after Infinity or in the middle of Infinity, where he's writing this Inhumans book. Uh, it's just taking up too much time. It's it's like taking all of his energy. So. Too much time to write the world's greatest comic magazine. <laughs> Yeah, so Carl Kessel will be taking over, and uh, someone named Lee Allred, so Mike Allred and Lee Allred will be working on the books. Really? Yeah, That's Lee Allred's writing, uh, we're going to be writing the FF book, Carl Kessel's coming back on with Mark Bagley. You know what that means. You know what you're going to get. <laughs> what am I going to get? You're going to get a Diablo story. Uh, oh, that, you know what? <laughs> you know, when, I read, when I read this news, when I read this news, because like you know like when, when certain news is like pushed your way, and... Mm. It's it's very positive. Like you know, here's this negative thing about this, and like it's like, uh-huh. but guess what? Carl Castle's coming back, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, I remember him on Fantastic Four. I remember something nagging on me yeah. about Carl Castle's run, 
And I was like, did he do a lot of like, Jewish thing stories? <laughs> <laughs> and it just like bore the crap out of me. <laughs> Or like I couldn't put my finger on it. So you uh, just like you hit me with a lightning bolt right now. Yeah. With like Miami <laughs> and Diablo was the the focus yep. of all oh, great. Do you remember when when we worked together and Carl Casella right. would come on the FF it, without a doubt? Like his like he he's would be the fill in. He's not a bad writer. No. I know he's not. No, not at all. But the fill ins he would do would always be like is Diablo mixing chemicals. Oh, God, I, <laughs> I listen. I love class. <laughs> I've said this before. I love classic uh, wacky. I love the Shocker. I love the Beetle. Right. Like all this stuff. I love almost every single FF bad guy. I love the uh, the wizard and the uh-huh. frightful four and every single incarnation. Claw. Uh, hey, D- I love Claw. Yeah. Hey, Diablo. Yeah. I have never like. I remember when Spider Man had was the uh, they had the um, uh, the McFarlane run, right? And you're super invested into it. And mm-hmm. then McFarlane left the book, and then Eric Larson took over. Like you're super into the book. Yeah. And then they did that weirdo. Do you remember this? They did a weirdo like B storyline yeah. with Eric Larson. Yes. And they did a really awful Thanos thing about death. Yeah. And then they did friggin' Diablo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they did like six issues of Diablo. Of him being an alchemist. Yeah, who cares? I the think, best, I think the best thing about the him thing. was Dragon Man. I think that's the thing that kind of knocks you for a loop is that he is such a great costume, but it's, A, his name is Diablo, and B, he's an alchemist. It's you know? Dumb. Just call him the alchemist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a much better name. It's a, and like, I. I think you know he's like he's a, a Kirby he's mm-hmm. a Kirby costume I believe I think so yeah if I'm wrong whatever but like he's got that very classic Marvel look to him where it's like a busy costume mm-hmm. but I never liked it yeah I, I should really <laughs> like him like I like the original Plant Man's <laughs> costume but I don't like this guy's costume yeah you're gonna get uh, oh, Sweet boy. Diablo story this guy exhausted <laughs> you know what it's a shame too because I really like I really like Fractions Run and coming off a of Hickman's Run that's a tough thing to do because Hickman's Run was yeah. legendary man yeah but you I mean you agree with me also that FF is a much greater book than Fantastic Four. Oh, absolutely yeah you know, like I'm I I'm not particularly crazy about the uh, mm-hmm. the other one because I think it's a lot of Alred uh, yeah. also you know that dude's art is just like I think Fractions writing for <laughs> That art style, man. Yeah, and, and but also Hickman, he, he you know, attri- it's attributed to him where you know the that the FF Future Foundation storyline that he created is really fun and interesting. Yeah, like you know, yeah. all the kids are are great. You know, the look of the book is great, and of course, like you know, all read whatever book he's on, he's gonna bring that much more, even if it's a subpar yeah. storyline. That dude really elevates a book. That last um, that last issue was phenomenal with the with the uh, yeah with Doom and like all the little all the kids kind of like. Being jerks, but not really. Yeah. And uh, Black Bolt kid. Yeah. Uh, kind of being the lead, like the de facto leader. Like yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a and cannonball and, and power that. and everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was, it's really good. It's a really solid book, man. Alred, man. People got like, people have to go back and pick up all the Mike Alred stuff, like Mad Men. I mean, uh, Mad Men's genius. Red Rocket Seven. Yeah. Uh, was it Red Rock? No, it wasn't Red Rocket Seven. Yeah, Red Rocket Seven. No, uh, it was something else. Red Rocket Seven was uh the, the Justice League uh the Russian guy in the spacesuit. I'm pretty sure it's Red Rocket. I'll yeah. keep on talking. I'm gonna keep talking. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. That's not an insult. Uh, pick um uh, the Ecstatics and X Force. Ecstatic X Force. Uh, he did a lot of great stuff. A lot of cool, like Gitchy DC stuff too. Um, I think he has a hand in uh, Batman sixty six doing the covers, which was excellent too. I don't think we ever talked about. Got around to talk about. It, I'm a about bit. That. I'm a bit behind. Is Red Rocket Seven? Is it? Yeah. All right. Cool. Red um, Rocket Seven. Um, just his my favorite designs. My favorite is Mad Men. My yeah. favorite is is X Force and Ecstatics. So yeah. Like. X Force X Stacks were such a weird little book. Yeah, and he spawned, uh, you know, a guy like uh, Dragada. Yeah, to yeah. To kind of like yeah. adapt to that there's Alred a lot, style. There's a lot of dudes. I think Chris Samney mm-hmm. took some from him. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of a lot of the guys who are in the Daredevil ad house right mm-hmm. now. The guy, you know, Paul Rivera and like guys who are uh, doing, you know, the Mark Wade Daredevil stuff are yeah. very much in the key of, of Mike Allred. That's why when right. he came on the book to do his stuff, it's kind of like. Yeah, grandpa's here. Yeah, and then yeah. like, because you know, you have like all those dudes are influenced like heavily by like Alex Toth. Yeah, but Alred was like the he's, legend among well, legends. That's the thing with, with Alred. You know, he's a, number one. He's a creative force. Like mm-hmm. aside from being a, an artist, he is a very good writer, and yeah. he does. I know that he has an input on whatever he's working mm-hmm. on. If he's only in the artist capacity, but I know he's attributed to like you know created by whatever, whatever. Um, but the thing with Alred is like exactly what you're saying. Like he's very Alex Toth. He's very old yeah. school. But he was the one that really brought that form of simple art and that but mm-hmm. still like absolutely gorgeous pop art style yeah. stuff into the forefront of modern, of modern comics. Of mainstream yeah. Marvel and DC. Because his stuff is mm-hmm. so, because what I like about it is, is aside from, you know, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Like, you know, Laura Alder, yeah. his wife on doing the colors and everything is, is fantastic. But it's so simple. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. But it's so awkward. Yeah. 
And that's what made something like Statics and Man Man so good is that it looked like, like regular people in the cop mm. in the costumes. Yeah. That's awesome. Great dude, man. I want to see him on Uncanny X Men. I would love to see that. Mm. I would I would like to see him do a I would love well, my every book. <laughs> my favorite news that came out last week is that Francesco Francavella is going on Guardians of the Galaxy. And like I've they released the first couple covers into for it, and it's it's like why didn't he think this before? Because it looks yeah. like pulp action hero stuff. Which is incredible. Yeah. I think that's also the first time you pronounce that guy's name right. I know. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> it's good. You know, it's a little smile. See what a little sun does to you? A little yeah. uh, get out in the air yeah. on the beach? I'm always in the air. Start surfing. Always in the air, baby. Um, did you get a trampoline for your backyard? I wish. I've always thought about it. I think I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got a small one. Get two small ones and just jump from one to the other. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. On one on one side of the pool, one get, on the other. I'm going to get wet and then I'm going <laughs> to slide then I'm going to break my neck. That's it. Um. Uh yeah. What, what else? Uh, what, uh, Walking Dead. Let's do it. What a book. What a uh, great book. Um, I think uh, this the week was burns. One thirteen. Oh my god. Like yeah. this is this this a, a lot of people been complaining that this this book has been really kind of treading water. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I like I, that. It's I like that. That's cool. I can't see it. Uh, it's the two frames and then the book. Oh, cool! I'm telling people oh, right exactly that's, what they're seeing. Pretty right awesome. Now. <laughs> the blind man. Blind yeah. man can't see. Uh. I, a lot of people were complaining about the fact that this was, you know, oh, we just want the, the Nagin fire ready. This, you know, it's happened in issue 100. We're 113. What's going on here? It's been a year since Glenn died. Yeah. Uh, th- this this book is fantastic. I mean, the the build up to this, and now we're slowly working mm-hmm. ways into like pure and utter danger yeah. for Rick and company. And we had an incredible, incredible Andrea moment. He had a great Andrea moment, which was why very... was this, why could we not get this point with her character on the television show? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. But like this, this is like a thing that Kirkman never does with the book is that he gave Andrea the Wolverine Hellfire Club moment. Oh, you know what? I didn't even yeah. think about that. But hell yeah, with yeah. like just wait they get a lot of them. I'm coming back, bub. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like well I like the, the that yeah. the cover was focusing on the you know her in the mm-hmm. in the chapel, yeah. you know the bell house, the um, the bell tower. And you know the whole issue is like Negan has found out that Rick Rick is you know uh, you know plotting against him. Right, has a place around with snipers and and bad guys. And uh, Andrea is up in the bell tower, and she gets attacked. Like you know, um, <laughs> I, it reminds me of uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh yeah, yeah, with like, Barry Pepper. Yeah, with Barry, yeah. With Barry, well, with uh, no, with um, uh, the Hebrew Hammer was the one he he kills. The right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Barry Pepper was yeah. a, was a sniper, so yeah. it's a little bit of everything. But uh, basically, she goes one on one with this one guy who's basically going to try and kill and rape her. Right. Um, I don't know if he was trying to rape her. I think he was just trying to kill. Her. I think. It's, I think he. I, there's a lot of a rape overtone, but yeah. I think he was just trying to murder her. I, I well, I thought that you know, I think of the, you immediately think the, the, wor- the worst possible things that happened. Right. To her. Yeah. And and the way the guy was very sadistic, it, was, mm-hmm. it, it could definitely turn to rape at any moment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they have an awesome fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, she gets thrown through the freaking off the the bell tower. Right. And uh, survives, and like like you said, you can hit it. No, no, she she throws him off the bell tower. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. she like flips him, and oh, then that's right. Yeah, that's you right, see yeah. somebody like the crowd fall. with Rick sees somebody fall, and Rick's like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, and then she's like, but she's a psychopath because she's like, you know, me and Rick promise each other that we Same will to survive. Nobody. Yeah, like we're gonna live. So it's like her and Rick. Survivors and, don't die. N- survivors don't die. Not even, not even uh, thinking about Carl. I didn't give a shit about Carl. Yeah. Just like it's me and you, Rick, to the to the bitter end. And she pops her claws, and she's like, "Now it's my turn." <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, it was really good. And I the whole th- thing with Negan and with the the bat, with Lucille. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, I like how Carl took a shot at Negan. And just like misses his head by a few inches, yeah. which was awesome. And he's like, you know, throw the kid over the fence. And this is, I'm going to kill this kid in front of Rick and blah, blah, blah. I think there's, I think you're going to see um, the tiger show up in the next, uh, in the next issue. I can't wait. I, the, um, all out, cause I, what is it? Like all out war starts on 115? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the official, you know, mm-hmm. moment's going to happen pretty yeah. soon. The, uh, I mean, cause the, I liked a little bit, like I love Negan's dialogue because the way that his mind works, the mm-hmm. way he's vocal about, the way that his gears are moving. Right. Um, I really dug on uh, the way that he explained his tactics. Right. It was very military and very yeah. like, well, yeah, you know, you have to do this, and you think I did this and that, and it was like very, it was like a moment of sanity. Yeah. Like, the guy knows what he's doing when it comes to, you know, being the boss, mm-hmm. doing military tactics, and taking yeah. people down. That's why he's naked. Yeah, it's 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 a really interesting thing. Like, how are they going to get out of it? It's like one of those anxious moments for a fan when you're like, "Whoa, what's going to happen? Yeah, what's going to happen?" Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to be mm-hmm. up against the wall with yeah. Walking Dead. But we're also going to get um, 
12 issues within seven months starting with 115 because it's a 12 issue story. Oh, that's line. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to get them like rapid fire like awesome. every few weeks, uh, every three weeks, maybe. Something like that. You know, and um, it'd be twice a month. Or whatever. I really, I really cannot wait for that because I like something major. Like he, he hasn't done something this like something crazy until Glenn, since Glenn got his head bashed. Yeah. In. Um, and going forward, I really feel like uh, Carl's going to bite it. Or Andrea. Yeah, something. So, yeah, I mean, uh, this, what it seems like in, in my eyes is that this is trying to trump the governor storyline. Okay. Especially since it's, it's happening when the governor storyline is airing on television. Right. You know, so you ha- get kind of weirdo uh, mirroring effects where, you know, you have Andrea mm-hmm. kind of being, a, you know, one of the least favorite characters on the show right. and how badass she's on this. And then you have yeah. the governor and Negan, where Negan is a little bit. <sighs> more of a refined version of the governor that we see on television. Right. Um, but just more mysterious and more, you know, just a bigger character. He's, he's like a hardcore dude. So I think, we're, yeah. the, you know, the the outcome of the governor storyline was so devastating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had most of the cast getting wiped out of the story yeah. and the entire status quo changing. I think you need to see something very similar to that. We yeah. always kind of say this when it comes to The Walking Dead mm-hmm. uh, because the stakes are always so high so it's a tribute they attribute that to Kirkman's you know ability to paint mm-hmm. his characters in the corner and you know really put it to them yeah yeah I really want to see where it goes like I, I every issue wait. man um, since the book began I, I wanted to see where this goes and 100 issue 113 believe can't that? believe it um, it's more comics than Kirby and Stan Lee did on Fantastic Four that's crazy yeah that's crazy and who thought that this was going to be the uh, the temple for um, modern classic for yeah for or in, for image you know the one that got him you know uh, at the forefront of the industry and yeah absolutely and, and really doing what image try to do back in the day mm. when now they're like they have seven issues they have seven new number ones coming out in november and yeah. pretty much every single their one number ones have been some of a success if not for the book mm. but for the creators themselves absolutely I'll you know like a justin jordan came out of that a yeah. lot of these guys you know um dennis hopeless came out of this yeah. uh who's the guy that's co-writing avengers with hickman right now um shoot it's a, it's yeah uh, he's good and it's he's on my brain uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like young dudes who are out there mm-hmm. who are like really got to start from images so you know and you have it, guys like joe casey who are rocking image right now oh yeah with like a ton of books well, uh, he, he's like their morrison for the most part okay yeah. you know he's like you know he's one of these unusual writers who are just rocking just cranks stuff yeah. out left and right and he's always uh, working he's always had something out yeah because what well, he is uh sex is excellent and um Bounce, I really like the bounce. It's a crazy book. It's a really, it's a really insane book. I think he has another one. Um, he does. He put something out very recently that I can't recall. Mm-hmm. But I, I, uh, I read that. Uh, I, I can't tell you the creative team, which kind of sucks. But I read that um, the orphanage, a uh, uh, burn, burn the orphanage mm-hmm. book. Good. It's really interesting because it's, it's essentially a uh, like final fight. Oh yeah, you know, or like the dude is just like he's like wearing like this rock and eighty street gang gear, Back and he that, fights, no and he has like a gay best friend who's like also a fighter, uh-huh. and like a chick that like he kind of like knows uh-huh. who's like uh, who's like a stripper, but she's also a fighter. So they basically go and like just start kicking ass everywhere, ah, looking nice. for somebody who burns out. Or for, it's it's interesting. It's a very like like arcade feel to yeah. it, you know, I'll but check that done out. in a very good way. Um, want to talk about? What? You want to do Trinity? Or yeah, Infinity. it's all about Trinity, because you really yeah. dedicate a lot of time to Trinity. All right. Um, Trinity Part 4 came out this week. If you don't know, it's the uh, it's the first major uh, DC mm. crossover, which is going to... Or at least in the JLA. Right. And it's, yeah. it's the first major JLA across all books yeah. crossover, which is going to lead into... Um, Forever Evil. Forever Evil, which is the first company-wide yes. mega event. Yes. Which I, I really think some good stuff is going to come out of Along it. Along with Zero Year to a certain degree, too. Right. Which we'll talk about. Um, But... Uh, Trinity Part Four came out this week, and it's pitting all of the JLA teams, all of the Justice League teams, against each other with an unknown force. And you have your three, the Trinity characters of Phantom Stranger, um, Question, and um, Pandora. Pandora, who's supposedly the the quote unquote Pandora for myth. Yeah. She has Pandora's box, which is a skull. And see, my theory, like I told you before, because the skull has three red eyes. Mm-hmm. If you hold it upside down, it's a brainiac. Is that supposed to be like the big reveal that that that's the skull of something? Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's well, um, some people say Despero, but I don't think Despero is the biggest bigger reveal because he already showed up in the story. Right. Yeah. Um, dark side. Yeah, I mean, it always seems like it's going to lead to dark side, especially since that's how this kind of universe came together. Right. But I think it's a cop out. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because we're getting into cool stuff that we enjoy very much because mm. like, that's like, on paper what we're just saying right now is like oh you know these three characters like they ruin the question they ruin the fan of the changer mm. who cares about pandora pandora's book the more is, is pretty damn good uh-huh. um the question yeah am i disappointed that he's not just like an average joe who loves you know buddhism and uh right. nihilism but or montoya or montoya yeah or um you know, fam stranger, the saint, definitively what he is, and mm-hmm. telling this guy he's got family and everything. But aside from that, is that they do a very smart thing with this whole Trinity aspect because you're dealing with this, you're dealing with uh, the three of them, and then you yeah. have you know Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman at, the, at the, the the middle of this. You have the three Justice League teams, right? And you also have um, the slow reveal that Earth Three has something to do with all of this as right. well, right? Because at the core of it, it's a story about how the crime society. Which is what what we love, right? Uh, it's a crime syndicate. It's a crime syndicate, yeah. or the secret society. Secret society, right? and then like I love all the names. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, Legion of Doom. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> the ghost. Uh-huh. Uh, the uh, it seems that the crime syndicate, the uh, the secret society of supervillains, has been uh, they geared Superman to kill Doctor Light, right? And all the stuff that's going on in the background. We find out in this issue that Doctor Psycho has something to do with it. Right, right. That, and he doesn't even know that he had anything to do with it. Exactly. And also we have, uh, you know, it's all these like weird little characters mm-hmm. interacting with each other and like backstabbing and stuff. And it just feels like DC of old. It does. And it makes does. me nostalgic. It, yeah. it, there is like this, it's, all the right pieces are working in the storyline. I, I completely agree with that. It really, it feels like you can excuse a lot of stuff within this. Yes. And uh, I really like the whole, like, Martian Man- Manhunter interrogating um, yeah. uh, Dr. Psycho, and he, like, just a hardcore Martian Manhunter, just, like, sticking I, his fingers into his brain. If not for nothing, I really have had enjoyed uh, Martian Manhunter through the New 52. I'll, yeah, Being I'll a real bad dude. Yeah. Like, for a good reason. Because, like, no, well, they did the exact opposite with, with him than they did in the original Justice League. You know, right. He was an original member. He joined, he was the first one to join the original uh seven guys right. and he doesn't trust the justice league inherently he does not trust you know any of those dudes right yeah so and but he has no qualms about you know ripping into people's minds mm-hmm. and everything he's awesome because his priority is saving the planet yeah you know he's or, save like, his own. keeping keeping the planet sane yeah or whatever he's got to do yeah um d- yeah because the whole martian thing which, which they kept you know like it's like I, i'll mention it and i will keep mentioning it that that superman costume just bothers me i know i know no, it sucks and like, but the but the kind of wonderful thing about this is that Superman, Man, Batman, and Wonder Woman, the guys who have the unusual costumes, yeah. well, at least Superman does. He's the one that's the most. Batman can get away with a lot of stuff. He, yeah, he's Superman's the one that's most glaringly odd. Yeah, uh, they're not the core focus of stories like this, right? You know, you get a lot of Amanda Waller, you get mm-hmm. a lot of you know uh, Steve Trevor, who they made into a really interesting character. I agree with and that. And a lot yeah. of the side characters, like you know the Element Girl, Adam, and, and Adam, yeah. and. And that's fun, and it's, and like uh, this was a this was a, uh, JLA, right? Yes, JLA is in my opinion one of the the, the tighter tighter books. Yeah, I don't read Justice League Dark um, regularly. They, mm-hmm. Jeff Lemire is doing a fantastic job in this crossover as well. Right. Yeah. Um. So everything is kind of like coming together. I'm really excited mm-hmm. for Forever Evil. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped for it too because you get that you get that great villains uh, mashup like advertisement where it's Luther in the battle armor. Yeah. Uh, and that was another cool thing I really liked about this issue. Where you get a very, um, you get a great sense at old school Luther, yeah. Uh, where he's sitting in the jail cell, right. and they were like, you know, like you can get released here. Uh, we'll let you out of jail. Mm-hmm. And he's reading the newspaper about Superman killing Doctor Light, and he's like, and he doesn't even say anything. And yeah. then they're like, he's like, you're all fired. And then uh, I forgot who shows up. Uh, Pandora shows up. And yeah. says like this you is you can help you can save everybody like you could save everybody and she's like are you're not shocked that I appear out of thin air and he's like I've I saw a man fly yeah like, nothing shocks me anymore so they really hammer home the fact that like at the core this dude hates still hates Superman because he's an alien yeah yeah and also he and the fact that he feels a little weird because he's been left out of this like mm-hmm. supervillain group yeah come on essentially he doesn't think he's himself as a supervillain right and interesting so uh, this this wherever this goes and whatever happens the fallout of this is, leads to a forever evil which is gonna mm-hmm. be like we said the, the big collab. Um, the whole storyline is basically there are going to be no heroes on Earth. Right. It's going to be strictly the villains. Every book is going to be taken over by, by a villain. Um, one of the cool covers though is you've got like you no. Know, uh, I think uh David Hitch did it or Ethan Scriver, where it's like all the dudes like mm-hmm. it's Luther in the armor, it's like Sinestro, right. and it's um uh, like Captain Cold and mm-hmm. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> and all the covers they they've done for for real so far. It's there's Batman in there. Yeah. So what happens to him? 
Plus, Batman's getting a new costume pretty soon, which is going to be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be the Azrael costume. I hope it's the Zoran R co- co- costume. That'd be all- <laughs> I'd, I'd read a whole year of uh, Batman and Zoran uh, Yes. Uh, if, if it came down to it. Um, it was awesome. It was an awesome. It's a, it, the, the issues are very pleasant. They're very fun. Yeah, they're they're really good. It's it's like it's nice harkening back to uh to like DC stuff. I we didn't I, I don't did you get a chance to read Trillium yet? No, no, I'm okay. I, I'm behind on a lot of the uh, the new stuff. We'll talk about that. Um, like you loved it. Right? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, I, gotta I read it the other day. I think I'm gonna read it tonight before the Collider was good too. Which one? From Collider from Vertigo. Yeah, I have that also. I didn't uh, pick up yet. It was really good. Um, but uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this new DC stuff. It's also weird that uh, I didn't read it. Uh, but I know I have the issues at home about like Bane being like real jacked. Yeah, because yeah. it's like it's he's basically like video game Bane. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's a there's a. Thing What's the explanation of, for that? Nothing. They're just he's that's the way he looks. That's he's just he has like, a big vat of, uh, vat of venom on his back, and he he is Arkham Asylum, you know Bane. Okay. But they they solicited a uh, an issue of this thing called Arkham War. Okay. Which is gonna be like in the, the the evil stuff. Uh, they showed Bane, and he was like classic mm-hmm. Bane. You know, he had the old mask. He had the old body type. Like Luchador Bane. Yeah, he was yeah. just a big dude that's, you know, kicking ass. I, see, I my, I love Bane being, like, a guy who inherently thinks he's doing the right thing, but right. is so, like, darkly obsessed with Batman. Yes. Like, yeah. the Secret Six version of him was awesome. Like, when they show him <laughs> pump himself full of, ven- uh, of Venom, and then all he sees is Batman. Right, yeah, And he yeah. just goes nuts on him. And then him becoming, like, the guy who's like, well, Batman wouldn't approve of that. Yeah, and he like yeah, it's, yeah, and he has a weird obsession with him. Like he's like, it's not a bat thing, a Batman thing. Yeah, and like, and also he's a he's a smart dude. Mm. He's not some hulking dude. He was a guy who really can go toe to toe on a mental game with uh with Batman. like Batman, yeah. but it was all he had his inherent floor where he was just like too obsessed with. Oh, he's obsessed with him, and he was also on uh, a ton of experimental drugs <laughs> and in love with uh with the uh, lesbian Vandal Savage daughter. That's right. Too. Yeah, yeah. Was, they did such a good great stuff with him, and mm-hmm. it's, it's all gone. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all gone. I don't know, man. After uh, after zero year, I hope so. Alex Luthor. Well, the zero. So let's talk about the zero year real quick. Mm. So because uh, it was a good issue, but the Batman issue for this week, I think twenty four, right. was a bit of a transition issue. Kind of like putting a lot of pieces together, and we saw the the moment before uh, uh, the the famous moment when he when Bruce wants to be Batman. Right. The the you know he has the bell, the Frank I, Miller moment. I will become a bat. Yeah, the Batman year one crap. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So, but I, I, again, the solicitors reveal that there's going to be a year, year, zero year crossover with all the books drawn mm-hmm. Forever Evil, where they're going to show different characters in Batman's zero year, like a young Dick Grayson, okay. like that. Yeah. It's not going to be something where we're, where it's like zero hour, but a, mm-hmm. it's called a zero year uh, blackout. So, in the beginning of the bat, the zero year uh, stuff that we read, we saw like an overgrown. Uh, Gotham kind of, City. Yeah, like a Last of Batman Us. Batman on that cool motorcycle. Yeah, the Last of yeah. Us and Batman and Gotham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Whatever happens there is going to lead to that. So that's what I see. That's around. that's really interesting because that that leads me to think that the that Red Hood is 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 um what's his name from the main baddie in uh, Trinity, the um, Alfred, the possible Alfred. It could be. I mean, there's uh, it, it, see they write him mm-hmm. very inter- interesting. Yeah. But number one, because they did the you know you have the uh, the mouth, so you see mm-hmm. like the smile and everything, right. He has the carnation and everything, so you think, oh, you know, you know the history of Joker, right? Right. Uh, it, He's got the receding hairline like Alfred. Yeah. Well, the other guy. Yeah. yeah. The well, the 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 bad guy in Trinity, the the, the yeah. head of uh, Secret Society. He right. He is definitely Earth Three Alfred. Right. In, in my mind. No. See, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I think the Red Hood is um Earth that same guy is the same guy because uh the whole speech he did in this issue of Batman with like my the day, whole. Um, the hole in your life that you get obsessed with, like how it ruined everybody when his parents were murdered. You no, know, when uh, he was like, the night your parents were murdered, it didn't change your life, but it changed my life as well. Yeah, and it kind of alluded to the fact that it could, it could be him. It could be Earth Three Alfred. Was, was Alfred an orphan? No, now, but uh, he was obviously taking care of Bruce. Uh, not necessarily, because they yeah. well, they said that. Well, they said the reason why he he says that uh, it changed my life also is because mm-hmm. that was the day that his parents got thirty eight in the house and like right. The, his oh, parents. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that. But no, it, you, you, you might be on the right. I mean, that'd be a great reveal if yeah. you had this other Alfred or whatever. Um, I think the Trinity is definitely going to be revealed that this guy is, is Alfred. Uh, okay. Out. Um, the outsider. Uh, but the uh, the Red Hood thing is fascinating. I'm mm-hmm. really like engaged in it. Like, I think maybe it's Edward Nigma, but you also yeah. know because of Death in the Family, they did acknowledge that Joker was Red Hood. But right. you don't know if it was after something like this, where, like in the original Killing Joke, where they said, like, 
you know, they just handed over the the guys to him and said, like, go be Red Hood. Right. That was and just like a, up. like a guy who was who was a bunch of like low level thugs. Yeah, he was a uh, he was a comedian. He just he needed money. Right. 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 Uh, do, is that part of canon anymore? <laughs> uh, they haven't said. I think that's why they're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's interesting. Well, Barbara know. Gordon get they get shot. Right. Yeah. So we know that much, but I don't know about the Joker background. Really stuff. looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, you gotta talk about Infinity. I know. And Infinity. Yeah. For Marvel, number one, awesome. Yeah. Love no, it. I uh. I so I I read it, and you know the the whole like you know how, I love the fact that it's broken up in chapters, right? Uh, so the first one is called the tribute, mm-hmm. and it's like it's kind of giving you the setup for the whole story of because there's so much going. There's a lot of it's like it's it's great Hickman stuff because it's so yeah. complicated, and you have uh what you know what you later revealed to be Thanos, you know having kind of like you know yeah. a meeting with his like his generals like this mm-hmm. guy uh, gave us black or, or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, that who was in the Avengers movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like now was that like was that his was that uh, his first appearance in the Avengers or was he like an older character? I wanted to ask you because I know you're familiar no, with the these uh, all new characters. Everyone, okay. all those do, all those guys are like the uh, mm. that entire segment like the Outrider and all that stuff. Right. They're all new stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I I do I do have my finger on the pulse when it comes to like the Adam Warlock the house crap. Right, right. Because um, that because that that was an interesting thing that you pulled a guy from the movie. And yeah. threw him in the book, and it worked. It was very, it was very seamless. It was cool, yeah. yeah. And it's and and they kind of create the same atmosphere they did when they introduced Thanos in the Avengers mm-hmm. movie. Um, but so I read that, I read that first chapter, and it ends because that was the preview book they put out for, for uh, free comic book day. Okay, I'm like, you're kidding me. Yeah. I've been waiting months for the the preview book, and I'm like, I turn the page, like, oh, thank God, there's a lot more storyline. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, they, they do mm-hmm. that part where they focus on the Thanos stuff, and then they do a lot of stuff with the new Avengers Illuminati stuff. Yeah. And they do, uh, they focus on basically Captain America and Iron Man saying we're screwed. Yeah. Um, what else did they have in the book? Well, the, the, uh, what I really enjoyed was that they made, um, Thanos' mouthpiece like real hardcore, right? They gave yeah. him like an immediate history. And the Outrider stuff was cool, which were the assassins that work for Thanos who were like these super psychic, ethereal yeah. psychic beings that can are the perfect assassins. And like visual planes that look like octopus. And, yeah, and it's really interesting how it's Black Bolt who's going to be the downfall of everything because they invaded his mind and while Black Bolt was asleep and then Black Bolt was like, get out of my brain and he rips the dude's arm off. Yeah, that was, that was, mm. free. and it's also weird to see Black Bolt out of costume. Right. I really feel like I was sleeping in his costume all the time. No. <laughs> but I like the I like what they did, like the little segments, like the, the yeah. paneling they did. Yeah. Where like he's getting to his mind and you see like the royal family, mm-hmm. like with all the wives. Um which I think it's cool that they still kept the idea of him having like all these wives now. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the next panel is he's like, No, I need to go deeper, I need to find something else. <laughs> and you see like the uh you know, whatever other lords of the inhumans were. Right. And he's like, and that's yeah. what I'm looking for. And that's what he mm. brings back to Thanos, this information. Right. Like, and, and that's why we're getting this big in- humans thing afterwards. Right. And then, like, you have, like, the old pantheon, like, those guys who were in, um, uh, um, the Terry Dodson book. Terry Dodson book. With, uh, it was, uh, Mad Fraction and Terry Dodson, uh, the Defenders book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, those guys play into it, you know, like, those timekeeper guys. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that were there. And Ooh, the, the, uh, the builders? Cause they, yeah, they had the, uh. The, no, the build, um. No, not the builders, not the creators, the, um. Uh, I know what you're talking about, the, yeah. uh, John, uh, Prode, whatever his name is. Yeah. The guys who would sleep in front of the, right, the, like the, 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 the lime yeah. engines, yeah. Right. Uh, those, like, and it's all Hickman, and, uh, Hickman's bananas when it comes to this stuff, man. And it's, it's such a crazy, like story yeah. and i think this is one of the more crazy marvel stories that they've done well did you read the bleeding cool thing about it like the the kind of like a post-mortem after the issue no. came out they did a really cool thing where they he broke down um how they basically you know they never say the infinity gems in the story ever yeah, yeah, yeah. and they said you know they show that you know at one point they had these th- they, they call them like you know these the tribute or whatever mm-hmm. and uh did I find that they're looking for these things right and like when he goes into Black Bolt's mind they see the the the, uh, the jewels the, mm-hmm. the gems and then you see that they don't have them anymore right um, but every part of the book focuses on a separate gem right they talk about reality they talk about soul they talk mm-hmm. about uh, you know space they have a whole like diatribe on space mm-hmm. um but what's great is the setup for the like what Thanos is trying to do where like all this stuff has been happening all mm-hmm. at once and then you know the Avengers are taking everybody, including X Nilo, who I think is awesome to be on the team. Absolutely, yeah. isn't it? He lo- yeah. he's fantastic looking. And it's a really cool character. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they all go into space to go uh, take down. Where are they going again? The, uh, I forgot. 
Uh, oh, because they know the builders are coming. Right. They yeah. know the builders are arriving. They have to stop them. So they're leaving the planet. The book ends with Thanos saying, like, since the you know the Avengers mm-hmm. are not going to be on Earth, and since like there's so many Avengers, like so many superheroes, Let's go. Yeah, you know, we have to. We, we're going to go to Earth and go yeah. take them down. He's, he's, he's going to be the one guy in the Marvel universe that could ever destroy Earth. Well, they said, again. Yeah, because the one thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was uh, what's his name? Uh, Iron Man saying like he can't go to space, even though he's spent all his time in space. Right. But you know he's staying there to stay with the Illuminati. Exactly. Because he didn't. Because. Yeah. With all this going on, if you're reading New Avengers, you know they've been kind of planning for all this. Right. And there's a lot of stuff we don't like. Captain America still is mind wiped. Right. Um, and you still have like all these weird elements that are lurking from Illuminati that Black- they destroyed worlds. Right. Black Panther still being the king of the dead. Um, yeah. Reed Richards still kind of like traveling back and forth through time. Yeah. Uh, Beast. <laughs> Beast is, I think, going to make a big, a big, uh, terrible move. Is this going to end with Beast dying? No, I hope that. I, I th- oh, I hate when this story ends with Beast dying. Yeah, he's the first one they want to sacrifice. It's true. Um, well, I well, they should or Angel kill him and bring back Cat Beast. No, I'm not down with. The, I love Gorilla with Baboon Caliban. I love Beast. it. I love it. I, I I do not want Cat Beast guy. I uh, had my time with Cat Beast and uh, Black Bolt. Man, I think Black Bolt is just going to destroy. It. Like that's that's the one thing where you have like that ultimate power in Black Bolt, and you have like a lot of stuff with Maximus going in there too. Yeah. Um, where Maximus is probably going to be. Uh, like there's gonna be a reveal with him. Well, they they in the last issue of New Avengers was a mm-hmm. big Black Bolt issue where the right. dude developed this like other, this pocket dimension for Black Bolt to go in and that, talk and talk <laughs> yeah. and like you know and like tell his wife to go away. Uh, and he also built something else, which is like which they that Maximus said that I'm more excited about, which is probably more destructive. Right, right. So you know you're gonna ha- he's gonna have a big microphone and just yell at Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what's amazing is like because we're leading into this mad faction, <laughs> mad faction, uh, faction. Uh, in humans book which mm-hmm. is gonna be big which has which is basically the story of all these people on earth getting the terogenesis stuff right. happened to them so like getting another element of mutant another spider island yeah pretty much and uh but he's been building a black bolt for a long oh, period yeah. of time yeah. no since that was like one of the very first storylines he did and and uh that hickman did in, in fantastic four well deserved too yeah and like you know he's a great character who unfortunately spends a lot of time sitting around and saying one word and then bouncing yeah, and so I like he number one. He's one of the most uh, mm. aesthetically pleasing characters yeah. out there, and like his universe is so weird. There's not weird. a thing that you have to do with that costume at all, and everybody no. got updated over the course of time. Medusa, uh, Karnak, perfect. Um, Gorgon, they yeah. all got updated. They, all, they all look great, awesome. All, yeah. Like the Jay Lee, you know, updates and everything. For oh, them yeah. were really yeah. awesome. Like making like you know Gorgon into like a dude, like a monster beast. Yeah, yeah. Like, Karnak into like a re- weird Hoofed. Asian, <laughs> like you know, lesbian, like yeah. karate guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like the humans can be really fun and fascinating. Yeah. They're weird, weird books, yeah. kind of characters. So I think Frax is gonna do a good job on. It. But I really want to see where this because it seems like Hickman has a personal stake in Black Bolt in Black Panther. Yeah, uh, and to a lesser degree, like the big, th- the big like Iron Man, Doctor Strange. Like, uh, um, do you think he's gonna get all the uh, all the black? Uh, like name precursors on one team, like they are Black Bolt, uh, well, th- Black Panther, <laughs> Black Knight, Black Knight might come back. I uh, hope so. Black Goliath. Well, well, actually, his name wasn't Black. Goliath. Well, like, almost, all the, almost all the guys at mm-hmm. Thanos, all of his like his uh, generals are all black. They all have like black in their name. Something right. like Ebony Moore and like Black this, Black that, and also uh, that Black Avengers team, the Mighty Avengers, is gonna be fighting Ebony Moore as a crossover. It's very, it's very interesting. <laughs> Hickman's just obsessed with the color black. I am too. I think we both are. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, you're right. But uh, I, I, that's gonna play into. That's gonna play into something major. I can't wait. I mean, I, this was uh, mm. uh, Hick, p- putting Hickman in charge of a major crossover is very fascinating. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a strange time for it. Uh, I was even fascinated by the uh, at the end when they did the checklist, like how he did that weird grid that actually yeah. forced me to look at like how this thing's gonna run and actually absorb the information. I think that's uh, I think that's the interesting thing about Hickman is because like this guy Flow charts, wrote, man. this guy writes a great comic book and also charts it out for you so you know where you're at with any book he writes too. You yeah, know? remember the stuff with Se- Secret Avengers, like all the Secret, Secret Warriors, Warriors, yeah, Secret where Warriors. he had like he'd spend so much time on graphing and even the uh, Manhattan Projects is like yeah, Manhattan Projects phenomenal. Yeah, he's well, he's a design freak. Yeah. I mean, that's his other his other love is is design work. Um, Shows. did you read the did Did you get a chance to read the digital thing with this also the no. Civil Service storyline? No, oh, you gotta read that. Yeah. It's uh, uh, what's his name, Ribic, and uh, doing a Civil Service storyline during really? this. 
him arriving in the uh, scroll territory when uh um, like that the uh the robots the alephs uh, okay are showing up yeah it's awesome does riddick show up yes i'll send it to you <laughs> i gotta i gotta send you a bunch of stuff yeah please do please do i, I need I, I need that trinity number three i know i'll get to you uh i know text you text me when you get home yeah i know you buy all your books digitally i know <laughs> uh what is on the uh besides like the zero year stuff um infinity is like the big thing for marvel the really interesting way that they didn't really shove it down your throat this time yeah you know, usually with crossovers they're like buy this buy this buy this buy this well i think i think for the i think they've been slowly re- marvel's been slowly refining mm-hmm. the way that they um they do their crossovers where we're we're really going into them with knowing next to nothing about them right. infinity they told you nothing yeah. And there's just so, like if you look at the books that Hickman's doing and like the the main architects of, of mm-hmm. Marvel, you're seeing a lot of uh, stuff just going on. So you really couldn't say like, okay, I can pinpoint this being the big thing. You knew Thanos was involved, right? Uh, you know they've been doing all stuff with the builders, which is like mm-hmm. if you read the, the Illuminati book, it's like it kind of like goes over your head half the time because right. there's yeah, so yeah. much intro- new story being introduced. But it's I, you could feel that payoff. Yeah, but. It was very gradual. It was a very gradual way of going into this. I think the same thing with the time stuff, also. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I agree with that completely. They also showed. Um. They also kind of broke down a lot of stuff in Infinity Two for you, like which made it more palpable, like in the beginning of the book, like who's who, mm-hmm. um, and who are the the players. I think. Uh, I think Marvel also has pulled a uh, a very big Keanu moment on on fandom by saying like, "Hey, man." The whole company's a crossover, <laughs> which is true. Yeah, and you're like, whoa. You know what? Now that I think about well, it, Uncanny Avengers, Avengers, New Avengers. Um, they mention everything. All the X Men books. Yeah. Um, whatever in uh, Captain America, like they're all kind of like you know, like the, the the universe is very unified at this yeah, point. Yeah. You know? Most of the books are all part of one fluid community yeah. of storyline. Um, the time thing is kind of like it, it. You know, you you saw it happen in Age Voltron, but if you look at mm-hmm. all the books, like we talked about before, like we there's in all the other books you see there's like some element of time travel or something right um and even in this book the uh thanos mentions like earth is screwed like the mutants are left there right they they hate each other there there's barely any of them left it's mm. opportune time to, to attack right uh it's it's an, it's an interesting thing and like we're like and like my question for you is like was age of ultron ultimately pointless uh yeah i think i think age of ultron was a uh, a, a labor of love for mm-hmm. for bands to get the storyline out that should have been out a long time ago, mm-hmm. but they just kind of threw that ending on top of it at the very end. Okay, that could have been an, you know an annual you know whatever. You mean with Angela? Not the Angela. No, no, the, just the, the time breaking. Oh, okay, yeah, which yeah, yeah. seems like the most important thing. Like the Angela thing was the last page, right, but yeah. you know uh, the issue already came out, and I don't hear anyone really talking about it. Well, yeah, I think the time breaking thing also was more of like let's try to figure out a good a plausible way to end to cancel the ultimate universe yeah well i think it's more than that i think there's gonna be a little bit more than that because they there seems to because like remember remember even in uh x-men versus uh avengers yeah uh when cyclops first gets a phoenix force and he's getting like really crazy he has that thing where he thinks about going back in time and wiping out the avengers right yeah so there's so much i there's so much focus on the past mm-hmm. and like the battle of the atom stuff is going to come out of x-men with like right. you know the fact that we have time these, displaced x-men yeah and like they're screwing up the time zone time periods yeah. like you have beast, and time zones and time zones <laughs> yeah. they're the pacific they're mountain <laughs> uh with beast and like gene gray hooking up and yeah. like you know they're all like a big mess so that was a really great issue by the way that's fantastic um man. i and, love the hell out of that book man. i love the way um young beast is drawn in that book that's a moaning right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I give him like the uh, like the pug nose kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's who it's, who drew um book. who drew uh Infinity? Uh Chung. He's so good, yeah, man. Yeah. He's my man. He was doing uh he was doing Young Avengers uh yeah. the first run. I think that's some of his most beautiful art. Even his uh his Young Avengers stuff, uh the uh, Scarlet Witch stuff that he did later on mm-hmm. last year. Oh yeah. He does such an incredible doom. And he does a very he the way he captures uh superheroes are uh really fun. And yeah. very distinct and very distinct for everyone too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nobody nobody looks exactly like nobody has and, like the same chiseled um face. And did you did you hear about Kevin McGuire? How we got Maria got fired? Yeah, yeah. Bendis got him. He's coming on to um Booyah. What's Bendis doing right now? All new X Men. Uncanny. Uncanny. Doing something else? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Is he still doing Avengers Assemble? 
No. No. And Kelly uh Clay Oh, uh, Kelly Sue Deconic is doing it right, yeah. Um Marbury. is uh McGuire. Because he basically came out like after he got fired. And he's like, How kinda like how dare you? This like Jobs? <laughs> this is this is Ke- well like Bennis came out and said, like, how yeah. dare you? This is like this is Ke- oh, he's coming to he's gonna be the regular artist for Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, awesome. He's like uh Perfect. Right. He's like, How is this guy who like you know, revolutionized the way that we look at team books mm. and the art style for team books were were you know, uh, just like International being the original Talking Head book, exactly for superheroes, yeah. and is being the guy who redefined the, the Talking Head stories. Yes, and like, why wouldn't these guys work together? And like, I, I feel that that guy is completely unused. Remember when they did that Just the International like reunion? Yes, book? that was it was all right, yeah. but the art was like the dude has it. It's oh, not yeah. better yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, that was with the, that was like the reunion with uh, Giffen. Yeah, um, which was good. It was good, but it was like the same the, fun. You know, yeah. J. Lai was one of the best books from when I like from my youth. Yeah. You know, I just like remember reading it and being like, "This is completely amazing." Yeah. Um, him teaming up with Bendis is also ridiculous. Yeah, I think they, I think they do fantastic. And that's a perfect book for him to be on because I really want to see him draw Star Lord and Rocket Raccoon, and uh, then make him look like Nort. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I think it's gonna be very cool. See him draw Batista. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna start seeing a slow Batista transition, I think so. and I think you see a slow transition for all the characters. Uh, so like, also, uh, Batista is the perfect dude to play Drax because he has such an oddly shaped head. He is. He's yeah. like that peanut, like that wide peanut head. I, I'm, 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 I'm really, I'm, I'm really obsessed with knowing how they're gonna handle Drax in the movie. Like, what they're gonna say his origin is. Is he just gonna be a green monster, or is he? Gonna, they're actually gonna go into like the weird jazz guy <laughs> got into a car crash, I th- turn into a big hulking monster, and then later <laughs> become a killing machine. He becomes Vin Diesel. Yeah, I think he's gonna become a cosmic killer. He's just a cosmic killing machine from day one. And they'll go into it later on. Yeah, I don't see him. I don't see him. I love his origin. Uh, talking at all. I really wish they they would do the 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 one with him showing up with the kid. Oh, uh, Cammy. Yeah, yeah. Which would be really cool. Um, but I, who knows what they're gonna do with Star Lord? Who knows what they're gonna do with everybody? Uh, Groot and Rocket Raccoon, I imagine, are the easiest. Gamora is probably pretty easy. Yeah. Saying like she's a warrior queen, they can do that in like a thirty second. Well, they clip. can they can t- they can immediately uh, you know with with Gamora they can mm-hmm. immediately say you know her Thanos connection, how she was raised by Thanos, right? You know. And introducing because and Nebula because Nebula is the is the bad guy in this one. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got to wrap it up. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Read some comics. Uh, I'm Rich Stambolian. I'm Mookie Wilson. He is later. <laughs> <laughs>